Northwest. That was the direction we had to go if Malkashar's words were to be believed. We were to seek our saviors in the depths of the largest mountain range within our reach, a place formerly inhabited by the artisans of the earth, the dwarves of Nalga. According to Anlinde, he was a tormented soul, a man who began his journey fighting for what he believed to be a noble cause, before veering off the road into an eternal abyss that tainted and twisted and destroyed him. Now that man's shadow walked alongside us under the surface of Irdia. I fear what future generations will think of us who allowed such a monster on our side. If we survive long enough to leave any descendants, that is. In spite of his evident bitterness, the necromancer did not make a second attempt against us. I wondered if this was a ruse, or he was just daunted by Anlinde's close watch. Hello everyone, and welcome. This is Scenario 4, Over the Sands. My uneasiness throughout the journey underground was not solely due to the Dark Sorcerer's presence, though. Anlinde shunned my questions about the catastrophe mentioned by her and Malkashar during their initial conversation. It was no surprise to me that the Lich would refuse to answer my questions. But why would Anlinde shun my curiosity as well? Is the Order of Sorcerers she belongs to not dedicated to preserving and communicating our lore to any elf who would display an interest in it? And how could she, with her words alone, weaken such a peculiar adversary where other sorcerers would fail? Ah, the surface! And the sunlight! Scorching hot sand everywhere as usual! How unpleasant! This environment is even more unfavourable for us than the caves. My lord, there is an oasis north from here. If we want to advance across the sands, we will need to make sure our people can rest and replenish supplies there. The problem is... I heard the rumours already. The oasis appears to be controlled by orcs. Is there any other way through? Definitely not. Unless your intention is to retrace your steps across the surface, and risk facing the demons again without the tactical advantage of your towers and forests. Small orcish tribes like the one ahead generally lack any proper military discipline. Your forest-loving kin should be able to crush them with ease. That isn't exactly motivating. They have lived in these sands for an epoch or more. They are not the intruders. Gallas, if you want to lead our people, you will need to become accustomed to making hard decisions like this. There is much at stake. Either the lives of a few orcs who would have no qualms about murdering us in our sleep, or the lives of our civilians and children, and our hope of protecting and rebuilding our civilization. I would never choose the orcs' lives over ours. Let us prepare for the assault, then. It is only going to become increasingly difficult and expensive to sustain our mounts in this hostile environment. Would that we could replace them with desert beasts. If it is your wish to ride sand lions, so be it. I'm sure you won't mind if I dispatch a few bats and possibly one or two skeletal riders to scout ahead. Our agreement did not include allowing you to make use of your foul sorcery in our presence. Did it include forbidding me from doing so, though? Let him do as he wishes. Alright, we can now recruit undead units. Elvish units become gradually more expensive to recruit, but not recall as you progress through scenarios. So this is reminiscent again of Under the Burning Sands, where this precise dynamic comes in. Elves get more and more expensive as you go on. However, we can recruit undead now, and that is cool, because in this scenario there is a dehydration mechanic. At the beginning of each daytime turn, so that is dawn, morning, midday, afternoon, and dusk, all play at controlled living units except bats will suffer from thirst unless they are standing on grassland or forested terrains, in castles, encampments, or keeps, or hiding underground. Each turn spent thirsty reduces the unit's attack damage by one and causes four hit points of damage. Thirsty units will regain full attack strength at the start of each turn by refreshing at a village or water hex, or being cared for by a healer. As with poison, a unit will not die of thirst even if it, is, if it is reduced to one hit point. Likewise, its attack damage will not drop below one. 
Okay, and what's crucial about the dehydration mechanic is that undead are not susceptible to it. So Malka Shah will be fine, and any undead recruits that I create will also be fine. Uh, our mission objective here is to defeat the orcs controlling the oasis. Malkeshar is now on our side. Um, and he, as we've seen before, is an absolute beast. So, looking forward to putting him into action. Um, that does mean that he has to survive. So, on the note side, as I've already said, living units are subject to dehydration. Undead aren't. Bats aren't either. Straying too far from the road is probably not the best thing to do. Sources for income are very rare in the desert. Choose your recruits and recalls carefully. Okay, so loyal units are valuable, if I have any. Um, and let's get started. Okay, so probably the best thing to do here is to go for very few elves, because the elves are going to struggle in the desert. What I will need is an extra healer to prevent dehydration from getting too severe. Um, so, for a start, and Linda is just gonna hop out here onto this camp, and Lamail, the Avenger, is going to do the same. Malkashar. Ah, here we are! Malkashar is an ancient lich. Although he may be a virtually unstoppable weapon against most living units, keep in mind that he is weak against impact, arcane, and fire attacks, even more so in the daytime. So just have a look at his description. There we see, and crucially the resistances, uh, arcane damage is very powerful against him. Um, fire is moderately powerful, impact is quite powerful. Um, blade, he's got some resistance, pierce, he's got a lot of resistance and cold. Yeah, don't even try it. So, Malkashar, head out into the desert and begin your journey. Now, this button here, I think, tells us... Yep, that brings back the dehydration window. It tells us what the effects of dehydration are. Who have I got to recall? Okay, there's quite a lot of units here. Um, the one that I really need at the moment is a healer. And there's two potential druids that I could bring out. There is Sothinia, who is resilient and intelligent, and there is... Limirea, who is dexterous and intelligent. Unfortunately, neither of them are quick. It would be useful to have a quick druid. Um, but I'm going to go for Sothinia. And hopefully she can level up soon. And then she will become a little bit faster anyway. Other than that... Let's look at my recruiting options. Alright, I've got ghosts, I've got skeletons, I've got uh, the full array of undead units at my disposal. Um, so, I guess I should start with some skeletons, because skeletons on the whole are pretty effective against orcs. So, I'm going to bring out one of my favourite units. Um, well, let's have one skeleton rider and one vampire bat. The Vampire Bat can do some scouting for us. And in addition to that, we're going to want some Skeleton Archers. A regular Skeleton. And another Skeleton Archer, because they're pretty flexible, actually. I tend to like units that have both melee attacks and ranged attacks. That means they'll always be doing some damage if anyone attacks them. And the skeleton archers have that. The uh, normal skeletons um, are pretty strong, but they don't have that ability. Okay, and then we're already down to having only four uh, income. And over here, well, once we capture this this oasis, we should have more income. So I don't need to worry too much about that limitation of four. Um, I can recruit or recall a bunch more units. All right, end turn. Gallus, it's not even midday. Has the heat atrophied your senses already? You defeated him once. Surely you could do it again if worst comes to worst. I need to know to what extent we can trust him. My lord, if you allow me to say so, he is a damned soul, a necromancer. You absolutely cannot place any trust in his words. I need to know his motives for offering us his help. 
If his intention is to strike us down and raise an army with our corpses, I would rather find out sooner than later. And the suns continue their journey through the skies. Hopefully your elves will withstand it long enough to reach the oasis, young leader. Will he ever stop mocking us? Mm, here we go. But you go out and do some scouting, and you can just go straight upwards for now. Maybe, yeah, deviate a little bit to go to that. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Here we see some wolves. There is a great wolf. There is a regular wolf. Um, these wolves are mostly just annoying. I'm not really too worried about them. Uh, I'm going to just stick Malkishar in front of them and let him take care of them. Now they can both reach him, so hopefully they will both basically suicide on him. Now, Sothinia the Druid, uh, you move out. And Linda, you can also move out. And Lemael, you move forward and get ready to stand in support. Now the bat can continue its scouting, just not in a place where it's going to get run over by wolves. So move another couple forward. Can we see anyone else? Nah. Alright, then maybe you should go over here. And there's more wolves, but they can't reach us yet. Okay, so first thing that's going to happen here is we're going to have to fight off an attack of not particularly terrifying wolves. Undead, get going. Now actually it might, I said there wasn't going to be much use for captains in this scenario, but there might be because giving these undead a bit of a boost could come in handy. Do I have any captains? I do have one. Is he quick? He is quick. Huh. Maybe you can come that come out to play. And who else? Do I actually have any loyal units? No, I don't. Vemir, note the civilian Vemir is still alive. And is still doing well. And he doesn't cost me any income, so it's actually quite tempting to recall him and have him give me some uh, moral support. I'm not going to do that, though. I think uh, the fewer elves, the better. Um, do I, in fact, want any more elves, or is this enough? Um, it's tempting to get a rider, but riders also die very easily, especially in the desert. Similarly with a Prowler. Prowlers are very powerful, but uh, I think I've got enough powerful units to take care of what comes my way. So instead I'm just going to recruit more undead. Specifically my favourite kinds of undead, Skeleton Archers. And a Skeleton. And then a Ghost. Or maybe even two Ghosts. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there are also walking corpses here, but they're too slow to be useful right now. Maybe when I get to the next oasis, I can start spamming some of those out. Okay, two ghosts, because they can die relatively easily, and then I think we are good to go, because we're already on a minus as far as gold is concerned. Just move that bat a little bit more. Ah, oh, there's another wolf over there. Okay. Still, you know, I'm not feeling too terrified by this wolfy, wolfy invasion. And none of them can reach any of my troops on that side just yet. On this side, they're going to run into Malkishar. Alright, so those wolves have already got pretty beaten up by just uh, going and fighting against Malkishar. Um, I can bring some other units in to take care of them, though I have to be careful that everyone ends up in such a configuration that they won't get dehydrated. 
dehydration is annoying. All right, and Linde, if you're lucky. Yeah, there we go. The Great Wolf goes down and you go towards level four. Um, some of the other elves here. Uh, Galas, I think. You can take care of the remaining wolf, or try to. Beautiful. Yeah, just beautiful. And, okay, Felor, you move forward. Malkashar, we don't need to worry too much about you. Um, one of these wolves can reach that square. I think I'm just going to move you out. Um, well, let's first move the bat up and see if we can scout the oasis. Ha! Oh, the scouts weren't hallucinating after all! It's a party of bold little elves heading for our precious oasis. Go get them! And we see the orcs. There is Grit the Orcish Warrior and Priol the Orcish Archer. Okay, so there are going to be some level 2 orcs out there. Maybe we can see more. Oh yes, yes. Okay, um, we're going to have a little fight on our hands. Maybe more than a little fight, but there's only one unit that's really scary here, and that's this level 2 Orcish Warrior. Um, no. You just edge back a bit. Now none of these orcs can reach you, can they? No, they can't. So you can keep going in a straight line, and you'll be fine for now. Oh, there's another couple of level 2 units out there. Alright, um, it's midday. And Malka Shah, you're just going to go straight over here and tank some wolf damage. Not too worried about that. And then everyone else can come and clean up. Well, maybe they'll go for this archer instead. Not too worried, if so. I'm leaving some ghosts out. Now, as you can see, I've got five Elvish units. Two of them can heal, which means that they can prevent each other from getting dehydrated, and they can prevent anyone next to them from getting dehydrated as well. So I'm operating with a very small number of Elven units. Essentially, I've only recalled one, and that's this captain. Um, and Lemael the Avenger was already there. get onto that hill, which means that we are safe. Okay, now we can see most of what's going on at the uh, oasis. It doesn't look like, I think, it doesn't look like these orcs are going to be too much of a threat, but we've got to deal with the wolves first. One of the wolves hasn't come out to play, but the others have. Okay, the orcs are very weak in at, uh, at night time. Sorry, the orcs are very weak during the day, and we ought to try and take advantage of that, but it's not actually going to be all that easy, because I need to make sure that I don't get into such a formation that all my units will die. So first of all, let's try and take care of this wolf in the back, and we'll mop up from the back. Okay, 
away, one wolf down. These other skeletons can't do anything useful yet. So they're just going to move forward. This skeleton can come and attack the wolf at the front. Um, probably these two... Actually, one of these ghosts can reach that wolf over there. That's quite fun. And there's a wolf and a wolf rider. I guess I know where they get their wolves from now. Lol. Now recall I'm not all that worried about whether these undead units live or die. I can always recruit more of them. I should still have a fair amount of money once I get to the oasis. It's the first afternoon, so it'll be dusk soon. The orcs will become more powerful, but equally... Hmm. What's the play? The play is to get rid of this wolf. That's clearly the play. And I want to do that as soon as I can. Without, however, exposing the ghosts to these archers, because these archers are usually fairly rubbish, but against ghosts they are in fact pretty good. So you can go in there and hopefully finish off this one. Okay, now Malkashar can get in here and can zap this orcish warrior. Ha, huh, that was far less effective than I hoped it would be. Um, alright, good. Well, now, does Galas want to just go in and slash? That might be the best way. Galas, after all, Galas is going to be able to do a maximum of 45 damage. Um, Lemael the Avenger can do 44 damage. Um, I think I'm going to give it to Lemael. Mine's well, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like. Hmm. Ah, oh, this is so tricky. Can Gallus reach the archer? No, Gallus can only reach this one guy. Okay, so then it's Gallus. Okay, um, now this orcish warrior is on his last legs. I could even try and take him out with a ghost. Or a bat. Um, either is tempting. What I will need is for Anlinde to stand behind here, and Sothinia to stand behind Anlinde. And then I can put this champ, this captain here, so he will give support to these two units. And now I've got relatively few units. Whoever takes out this this orcish warrior is gonna get themselves killed. Um, I'm a little bit worried about Galas even. He is standing in a place where he has very little defense, so I think I need someone to get killed for this. Um, and probably the best bet is to try and... Well, who's most likely to get the kill? The bat can't get the kill anyway, so then it's up to the ghost. Alright, so the Orcish Warrior is still alive. It's not brilliant. Where does the Avenger want to go? I could go in there, but that's not a great move because then I'll get dehydrated. So I'm just going to step up to the plate one more and go to this slightly higher defense location. That is going to go further into the hills, do some more scouting. And now we can see that, yeah, there are a few crossbowmen on guard. There's a, a, an orcish warlord back here, and an archer, but uh, no, I'm not feeling overly threatened by this lot. And no one can reach my bat. Finally, what to do with this ghost? Um, I think the right answer is for this ghost to just go over here and annoy this wolf. See, so here come the fire arrows. Even during the day, the 
still pretty nasty. And down goes my first. Yeah. So on the plus side, these uh, enemies are now nicely lined up and um, shouldn't be too much of a problem to take them, some of them out. Let's first see who can get in on this wall. Um, a couple of my undead troopers can reach. And that was with the support of the captain, you'll note. Um, this Skeleton Rider could get the kill if they're lucky. Let's try that. Ah, oh, the wolf sounds so sad. Um, Alright, now someone can go in. I think again. Um, again, a Skeleton. And take out this remaining Orcish Warrior. Yes, yes, this is more like old times. Okay, now we've got a bunch of weak archers. Um, we've got a few units who are marching up to fill the gap. Um, I think it's probably best if no one stands here, because if anyone stands there, they'll be able to be attacked by these two. And as long as I avoid that area, they shouldn't come into play yet. So, first of all, it's now dusk, which means Malka Shah will be a little bit more powerful. And I'm going to have another go at an Orcish Warrior. That's more like it. That's more like the Malka Shah I remember. Um, and now we just have to be a little bit careful in making sure that everyone is in place to do some nice damage to these skeletons. Blech, sorry to these orcish archers. Skeletons on the brain. Again, I'm a little bit wary about letting Galas run right in there. Um, on the other hand... Well... Probably the best thing is to let Anlinde see if she can get the first one. She should be able to if she can hit with everything. Uh, yeah, or just miss with everything. That seems to be fine as well, I guess. Um, Lemael the, Aven the Avenger, you come and try and finish off this one. Oh, oh man, this guy has all the luck. Can anyone else actually get round? Is this orc? Is this? Uh, is this? Is, is this guy gonna survive? Um, looks like it. Yeah, I mean, this is really not great. I was hoping to take out more of these guys. Um, maybe then the trick is, yeah. All right, fellow. Oh. Oh. <coughs> and then you come in here and take this one on. Oh. Nice, alright, and then you just need to come up behind here, and then all of my elvish units are healed, in, or within healing range. Um, I can use the bat to run interference, um, I'm not too worried about bats getting killed, they are only level 0 after all, and I've done all the scouting I want to do for now. Um, so I could use the bat to lure some of these crossbowmen out. Or I could use the bat to prevent them from moving around the side. I think that might actually be the better choice. This wolf, I'm not too worried about. I might regret saying that, but... But, well, I'm really not. So, I'm just going to move this ghost up and round, and the ghost is going to try and do some more wailing. <coughs> And now you can do what you like, and this bat is going to come down around here and distract. 
not very effectively, but you're there now. Hopefully you can uh, get a couple of units to attack you ineffectually, or one big unit to attack you ineffectually. Or just one level one unit. <laughs> And now the situation is not looking great for these uh, <laughs> for these orcs. My skeleton rider can come round and see. No, you can't quite. If you then, if you stay where you are, no, you go around. Wait. Right, you come round here. Wail at the wolf rider. And miss with all of your attacks. All right. Uh, then you maybe can get two hits. That's not my day. It's really not. If I can get this wolf rider out of the way, let's try that. It's sad. This skeleton's got a lot of experience. I don't want to put it in harm's way. All right, let's try the other flank first, see if I can clear out a few enemies on this side. Now, it's night time now. Um, it's not going to be night time for long, it's the uh, the short dark, but, but um, that means dehydration does not apply. So what I'm going to do is just edge everyone forward just that little bit. Is this too risky? No, I can I can get this back. Didn't get the kill. But you can get the kill. Nice work, Philor. Okay, now there's still quite a lot of powerful units coming along. But Galas, you can take a little break from the main fighting, maybe. And go over here and fight this. Archer. Very nice. Um, it is good to have a champion that's just that tanky. Alright, hmm, now you're in range of the, uh, the crossbowman, but uh, you should be able to survive that if necessary. And in the meantime, Malkashar, if you just step forward a little bit so that you're out of range of this crossbowman, you should be able to have a go at this Orcish Warrior with your full damage potential. <laughs> Look at that, you need four attacks to take out one of the tankier level 2 units, an Orcish Warrior. That is just beautiful. Um, now, Lemael, should you run out here and attack this Orcish Archer. Maybe in combat. It seems unnecessarily risky otherwise. Don't want to take that much damage. Now I forget when exactly dehydration takes effect. We, we, will, we will see. Um, if it takes effect at dawn, then Lemael, you will be dehydrated. Sorry about that, mate. You can go there, do some damage to this wolf rider. You can stay where you are and deal some damage to this wolf rider. On! Yes! And that means, yes, that means that you can come around here and get rid of the remaining wolf rider. Okay, no more wolves to worry about for now. Then you can run forward. And so can you. All right, we're getting closer to the Oasis boys. We've got um, a crossbowman who's gonna come out here, I think. Um, this crossbowman is, shouldn't be triggered. And this crossbowman, hopefully, this, this remaining archer can't do much damage. 
Nice. Okay, Gallus, you need some R&R. &R. Uh, okay. So, Lemael is dehydrated, but that should be fixable. Um, and in the meantime, a Goblin Knight has come out of nowhere and deal, dealt a fair bit of damage. Um, need to be a little bit careful with Galas now, he's um, looking a bit on the tender side. See if he can hang around with this druid who heals slightly more than Anlinde does. And now the question is, who, how and who, how, who, hmm. If you go there and get three hits, then you can kill this crossbowman. <laughs> Not quite, but... Now, who is it more useful? Um, Sothenia will be almost at a level if she takes out this crossbowman. I think that's more useful right now than getting Unlinded to level 4. Look at that, beautiful. And now, I can bring in some units who will benefit from the extra power of the captain, like this archer who's going to sneak round and get some damage in. Now who do I want to get the kill? If this skeleton gets the kill it will become a revenant. Could do, could get killed itself. Oh, I've got options. I can make it a Revenant, I can make it a Death Blade, or I can make it a Death Baron, and the Death Baron has the leadership ability. That's tempting, that's actually very tempting, especially since you also get a ranged attack if you're a Death Baron. Um, and you are tougher than either the Revenant or the um, Death Blade, so yeah, I'm going to go with the Death Baron. So now I have two leadership units around. Um, Malkashar, now you could run in and attack this crossbowman. In the middle of the day, I'm not sure that's the best of plans. Could do with some scouting, actually. Maybe this ghost can help reveal what's up ahead. Looks like just the leader. Uh, he has one, one warrior behind him. Could still be enough, could still be enough to deal enough damage to Malkishar to take him out. With 60% defense though, and during the day, I'm not too worried. I'm just going to put him forward. Because I think, ultimately, time is of the essence. Ah, that crossbowman there too. Mm. Well, the crossbowmen, if they attack him, they will die. There is that. Galas, you stay exactly where you are. You will get 10 health that way. You come in and get some healing too. And Linde, if you step forward, you... No, you won't quite be... Ah, oh, no, you need to be next to the druid. So in that case, I'm going to move you around to here. You go next to the druid, get some health. You go next to Anlinde, get some health. You also go next to Anlinde, get some health. And then you two can just run forward to the best of your ability. And hopefully, Lemail's dehydration will be cured. And I think that's all I should have to deal with. If I move you there, you can gain a little bit of health from being in the proximity to Anlinde. Okay, so the orcish warlord Karun Bagar um, is going to play it conservative. That's fine by me. Everyone, run forward and kill everything. Good start. And then maybe... 
maybe... Uh, well, that would take some luck. What about the... Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Alright, this warrior is looking pretty badly dented. We've got to make sure that these... Again, these crossbowmen, they are very nasty against undead. Um, so I do need to be a little bit on the careful side. You move forward, you move forward. This crossbowman, I'm just... I think I might leave... I think I'm going to leave Malkashar where he is, because... Yeah, you go around there. <coughs> it's quite hard to get ghosts to survive. <laughs> they are easily dealt with by certain kinds of units, including the two crosswomen that are still left. Um, you come up here. Well, skeleton riders are a really underrated unit. I've never really used them much before, but they are actually pretty good. Death Baron... You go and stand there, and then no one should be able to reach you. And the rest of you just form up behind. <coughs> this archer might die, but no! But no! And even if this archer had died, it wouldn't ultimately be the worst thing in the world, because it's only level 1. So now, I think, I can start to move right in and do something sneaky. Normally, you would never do this with a level 2 weak unit. However, I know she's going to level up after this and the crossbowman can't kill her, so she's just going to do the damage she can. And see, now she's a shide, or shide, or however you pronounce that. And she's gone up to full health again. Someone can come in from the back and take out this crossbowman. It might even be Galas's time to shine. Uh, <laughs> no one ever does quite as much damage as I hope they will. Um, Malkashar, your job here is to come round the side, I think, and uh, attack the Orcish Warlord. Yeah, I can see how this can be done. Alright, so you go up here. You go up here. Can I see any more enemies? No, good. You go there. And you can support this guy and give him... and get he gets some... Uh, some... abilities. Um, you, handily, can move around from this well-defended position and attack this crossbowman who's weak during the day, so you don't need to worry too much about taking return fire. And in any case, he missed with all of his attacks. And now we've got three beautiful units just lined up for the kill. So, first of all, this skeleton archer can hopefully do it. Yep, you are almost a bone shooter, which is the evolution of skeleton archers. Someone else, you. You are my friend. Yeah, all right. You're pretty close to a level now as well. Um, and if you come round here, now it's just all about how much I can line up damage on this Orcish Warlord, can I even maybe completely take it out in one turn? That would take some luck, but it's not impossible, especially with Malkashire. Let's see how much damage he does. Oh, it's during the day, so he's not as strong as he could be. Elves in my oasis, and you brought a necromancer with you, no less. Be gone. That wasn't too bad. 
Um, well, four out of five hits, pretty much exactly what can be expected. Um, the skeleton archer can now go try and do some <laughs> not too effective range damage. No hits. All right, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to kill this warlord this turn. Ghost is also going to try it on. But not to be sneezed at. Now, maybe. Now, on Linde, unfortunately, we'll have to hit with all four of her attacks to make this work, but it, it's not impossible. Nope. Alright, so the. But, now I don't think I've got too much to worry about, though I might lose this ghost if if the enemy gets lucky. <laughs> Lovely. Alright. Now I'm Linde. Still think I want you to get the kill. Or maybe even this captain now, but it's easier if I'm Linde does it. The chieftain kept a small hoard of gold in his tent. We shall surely find a use for it. 55 pieces of gold. Wow. I'm a rich man. The oasis is ours now, but we may not tarry long. Our people can replenish supplies and grab anything of value left behind by the orcs, but it is imperative that we continue scouting ahead and clearing the path. Is this what we have been reduced to? Looters and scavengers? Malkashar, where should we head now? West. I thought we were supposed to head northwest. First west, then we can resume travelling northwest. The sands north of here are especially unpleasant, with absolutely no sources of food or water for your troops for miles and miles. Your people would surely starve and perish. On the other hand, the sands and mountains to the west are all that stands between us and a river and then a green valley leading to the very heart of Idia. The sooner we find land that isn't completely covered in sand and infested with orcs. Alright, new objective, proceed with Galas to the mountain range on the western side of the map. I am just going to mop up this remaining orc, get these uh, houses under my command, and then I think we can take a break. Galas, you look like you're in need of uh, some R&R, &R, so... Of these people, only Malkashar can reach the furthest house, so you go there. Um, can anyone reach the one that's all the way up there? No, not quite. Well, maybe you can, but maybe... no. Alright, you go over there. You'll be there next turn. Um, you go there, Galas, you go over here, and then everyone who's left. Oh no, oh no, I misclicked. Can I undo that? No, I can't because it's revealed some more of the map. <laughs> well, I just hope there aren't lots of nasty monsters around here waiting to attack me. Um, in that case... Oh, you jammy so-and-so. All right. And then, 
Lovely, you fell off, you finished the job, and that means that you are on your way to a promotion to Martian. Now that means that Sothinia can run over here and heal Galas anyway. Um, well, can you reach that house in one turn? Yes, you can. So, actually, can you reach that house in one turn? Yes, you can. All right, you go over there. You go and grab some healing. You just run forward. And that is where we are going to take our break. So join me again for part two of scenario four of Invasion from the Unknown.